Hello, everyone. I'm Howard Jacobson. Welcome to Triangle Be Well. I will get to all the yada yada blah blah quite soon, but we got a special guest on the line that we got to get to because he has taken a 20 minute break from saving the world to come in and talk to us. Hello, Duncan Burns. Hi, Howard. Good to see you. So, Duncan, you are the, uh, the, the inventor and, and CEO of uh, Veggie Dome. So, just, start, just by uh, setting the stage, tell us what Veggie Dome is. Uh, Veggie Dome is a kitchen device, and I've got one here to kind of show your audience, that is made of glass, and it has a lid on it, and it has it's actually a combination of three different pieces of glass. And the, the lid that I just showed you is kind of like a cookie jar lid. And then the centerpiece is this kind of very unique shape of glass. And glass makers don't even like making something that has a hole in the top and on the bottom. And that's really what is the catalyst or engine for what keeps a veggie dome working. And then the bottom third piece is just like a large platter. And the whole thing is, as you can see, kind of an oval shape. Now, you introduced me as an inventor, but what the Veggie Dome really has been evolving to, into for me is that it's as much a discovery as it is an invention. And it's something that we culturally don't feel that it's even possible to be able to leave vegetables out on your table for two or three, four days, or even one day. We all feel like, well, it, it'll just wilt. And if you try to do something to keep it fresh, it'll rot. Now, <laughs> the discovery is that that is wrong. And it's a, kind of a misinformation that we have really generated and re-sowed or re-educated to, uh, because of, we've had the refrigerator for 100 years. And since the refrigerator was invented at a time when science was going to be solving everything in the 1910, 1920s. They were looking for science to be able to kind of dominate over nature and be able to solve all the icky problems that nature causes. The thing is, before the refrigerator, there were root cellars, and people kept vegetables in cool spaces. And that worked well. They wrapped them in paper bags. And now we use plastic bags that we twist up from the grocery store and drop into the refrigerator. And when we do that, we are putting plant life, which is actually still living, and we're putting it in the refrigerator and saying to ourselves, saying to, okay, stop. Whatever you're doing, plant, don't do it because you'll rot and I need to eat you. Okay? <laughs> and I know we don't talk to them, but that's what we do in our actions. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> well, you talk to it when you pull the uh, celery stalks out of the refrigerator and go, oh, there you are. I didn't know where that was. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are, when we put them in the plastic bag and put that twister on, we're condensing the ethylene gas that comes out of plants when you cut them. And some vegetables have uh, more of a release of ethylene gas than others. And I don't want to get too technical with your audience. I, I didn't even know what ethylene gas was until about a year and a half ago. But what, this is the thing. Ethylene gas is part of what the plants do, it's a hormone that they output, when they're cut, they go into survival mode. Buds open, roots form, seeds ripen. Because what happens is it's been chopped. Like a branch, let's say, falling from a tree, the part that hits the ground will start to form roots. And that's a survival thing. That, that branch can maybe start living on the ground right where it fell. Okay, ethylene is the hormone that allows those roots to start at the part where the branch is touching the ground. So, ethylene gas, it makes your vegetables progress and rot faster, okay? So you're putting it in a plastic bag, you're twisting it up, and it's in a condensed area where only the ethylene gas is. Now, what happens with a veggie dome is that we have really treated that problem three different ways. One is that it's in a dome. So already, there's more air in there, and it dilutes the ethylene gas. The other thing is, Whenever you open the lid to be able to reach in and get vegetables out, I'll show you by reaching in and getting some vegetables there, you are replenishing fresh air. So the ethylene gas is escaping. But even more so, and this is something that it took me, I, I, and I'll tell you a little bit more about when I first invented the, the veggie dome. 
And then I'll tell you this one more thing about ethylene gas, is that I was a dad, I was a film editor in the film industry, and I spent pretty long hours cutting and come home, and I wanted to be able to have my children eat a better diet. I wanted, I had a three-year-old at the time and a seven-year-old, and I, I just grew up liking vegetables, and I inherently or intuitively knew that you know, when you eat a lot of them, you, you're doing better for your body. Over the years, I've learned that really it's an incredible, huge help to your body to repair and, and, and to build all of the various uh, things that your body needs and energy levels is up. What I did one Saturday morning is I went to the co-op. It's a beautiful uh, store in, in uh, Santa Monica that sells probably the best produce that I know of, around 100% organic for years, okay? And so I went there and bought baby bok choy and carrots, and dad was on a little buying spree with fresh vegetables, came home with about 10 different packages, and washed a bunch of them, a sample of each one of them, and put a pile on the kitchen table uh, for getting ready for lunch. The kids came in, what's for lunch? And I said, well, there's some vegetables on the table. And they looked at me at this little mountain of fresh vegetables, and they kind of giggled. Dad's doing something weird, like, why is this mountain of vegetables on the table? But I, it was just because it accumulated from all these bags. So they sat down for whatever lunch we had, probably some sandwich or something, and they each ate one or two pieces of the vegetables from the plate, and they scampered off to their plate. And there I was, stuck with this pile of vegetables in the middle of the kitchen. And that's when I did something that changed my life. I didn't realize it was a big deal. But instead of just scooping that whole pile of vegetables into a plastic bag and twisting it and put it in the fridge and then probably finding it the next day or the day afterwards and having to throw away a good 30%, which is what we all do, 30% uh, is normal for households. And sometimes 40 to 50% of the stuff you buy in the store, that's perfect, gets thrown away in the home front. Um, is that I... Instead, and you know, a lot of the times, <laughs> as a dad, if it's halfway spoiled, well, that's where that's the stuff I have to eat, right? I put a an upside down glass mixing bowl that happened to be I don't know who had been cooking cookies that night before, but it was an empty, clean mixing bowl. I flipped over and put it on top of this mountain of vegetables. And then three or four hours later, we came back for dinner. And they said, what's for dinner? Of course, they're eating there before I am even cooking. I said, there's some vegetables on the count on the table there. And I went over and I lifted off this bowl. And it was just like I had just cut it. It was, it was not just fresh. It had not changed. And so they were able to gobble up some more vegetables. And then I finished the meal with the kids and put the bowl back on. And the next morning, guess what we had for breakfast? Well, we had a couple of vegetables and some other normal things that I'm sure... We, we were fixing during that time. Opened up the bowl for lunch that day. Had some more vegetables. And that night, actually, there were a lot less vegetables in that plate, and we added some more in. That dish with the bowl on top laid, stayed on my table for the next seven years. Completely changed the, the, the landscape of the kitchen. Every time the kids could go in the kitchen, they knew that there were vegetables on the, on the table. If they were hungry, they would grab a carrot or celery or something like that, and it just worked really well. Okay. And so, so, that, yeah. <laughs> so there's the invention of the okay. invention, or the discovery. That well, let, let me let me interrupt. Yeah. Let me interrupt and ask you something because that's fascinating to me. That you know, we think that the refrigerator has solved all of our problems, and clearly it hasn't. Clearly, when you open the refrigerator, you see, you know. First of all, oh, I didn't even, you know, I just bought three, right. I just bought another mustard because the thing was so full, I didn't realize I had three other mustards that were already open. And then right. the, the drawers that you have to bend down, like the, the vegetables for most freezer, the, the, the good stuff is as, as low as you can possibly get it. And what we're, what we're doing with the refrigerator is, is temperature control, but right. ve very little of the other sorts of things. So you're saying that there's I, 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 you haven't talked really about humidity, but you have talked about sort of gas exchange. So, so right. what, what, Which, what, what you, know, you came uh, up with was that people before the refrigerator had pretty sophisticated means of preserving vegetables at room temperature for more than a day. Well, yes and no. 
back in the day, vegetables were a lot cheaper than now. We're paying for organic or whatever vegetables. It's not cheap. And so there used to be a lot of throwaway of food because they would just bring it into the field. And part of harvesting is throwing away parts that you're not going to eat already. I and mean, that's what you do out in the field. And that's what you do when you get it from a market uh, a person who brings it in. So there was a, still a bit of a lot of throwaway. But yes, they had root cellars, they called them, a cooler area of the house that they would wrap it up. But and I'm not, this is the thing. I'm, I feel that the, the refrigerator is something that we can use in a better fashion with this device. It's not a compet competition. People uh, continually ask me, well, does it keep it longer than the refrigerator? You know, there are some things that go a lot better in the veggie dome because they're actually sitting there in the air growing because there's a humidity that the plants are creating inside that make it so that you can have a piece of lettuce without the head of lettuce. Literally, the piece I'm holding right here, I could drop it in there, and five or six days later, you'll still have it. It'll be living in the air there, and it'll have maybe just a little bit of brown on the edge where it dried out. And you just, I mean, that's literally just a little piece, and, you, and that whole thing is if it was still growing in the field. But, you know, there are other things that do better in the future. So that's not replacing it. It is certainly making you more fluent with how you handle your own food. It's a definitely a, a, a boost of another method. So enough. I, I wanted to maybe finish that story of the, the veggie dome getting developed. But for many years, I even I, I would walk into people's kitchens and see this vacancy that they weren't keeping fresh vegetables out on their counter. I mean, this is for many years. <laughs> and I also must admit, I would come home and, you know, yay, the dome would be, the, the, the bowl would be off and uh, on the side and all the vegetables would be on the plate. And I'd go, yes, the kids came home from school and ate up vegetables. That's great. But you know what? The fact that you always had to replace this thing on top and they had to worry about maybe a carrot sticking out or celery sticking out, it, it, it was always me that did it. Dad does the top back on, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't quite as good. For many years, I was even trying to maybe start a company and say, gosh, I don't know. I felt, this is the thing, Howard, I felt like I was walking around, seeing the world, with people walking around, pulling their pants up all the time, okay? And I'm holding a belt. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm saying, guys, you can put a belt on. And, you know, the remarks were, well, Mm, the, can't you get hurt with a belt? You know, isn't that you know? Can't you? What happens if it's too tight? You know, I'm going. Yeah, but you're walking around with your pants dropping down. You know, <laughs> doesn't it's it's interesting how when you have a different idea of doing something so basic as to where you're putting your food that people will not see it as or even think that that's possible. And um, one, you know. Rule in physics is the, the definition of change is the resistance to that change. <laughs> okay, I don't want to bring you too much science, but that was what I was facing for many years until a friend of mine said, well, why don't you put a lid on it? And it took somebody else like that to just say a really simple comment. The lid that fits on top of the dome Okay, that changed so much. And people are even asking me today when they're buying, trying to buy the veggie dome, you know, the Indiegogo that we have, oh, well, why don't you just have a salad uh, mixing bowl upside down still? It's, it's a huge difference. And that's why this design that I've come up with makes it that there's a, let me just list a couple reasons that are, that are better. First of all, instead of having dad always put the thing back on, which is you're always, finding some carrot that's sticking out and it's going to not have it seal that way. And it's just a, a real drag to have to put that thing back on. But also, the kids come home and they reach into a cookie jar lid. Let me tell you, it's very natural for them to do. But also, they put the lid back on. Or if they don't put the lid back on, this whole area still keeps kind of an, uh, a very nice human area still in. So they can reach in and grab the food. You don't have to lift off this big piece and then put it back on. And you're able to fill the thing up all the way up to the brim. So this one that you have right, that I'm showing you right now, 
It's very empty because I came to the office today, and of course, all these people have been eating it over the weekend. This is lettuce that was put in Friday morning, then that Saturday, Sunday, and this is Monday already. This is all fresh lettuce that's in this thing. And we usually fill it up with carrots, which is why it looks a little bit empty. I mean, full on fresh carrots filled up this thing and it's easy to serve it. But the second thing, and that's why I wanted to tell the story before getting to the next part of the ethylene gas is that I took it to UCLA and I was gonna be able to talk to either a botany teacher or somebody in science and life sciences who could tell me why is this thing working better now that I've got this lid on it? And so I, I went to a professor's door and it said, you know, we have meeting hours, this hour, this. I signed up for 1.30 on Friday. I come back on 1.30 on Friday and the professor May, who's a brilliant woman and incredibly nice, opens the door and goes, oh, this isn't a student. <laughs> and, I, and I was supposed to be there for an hour, uh, uh, 20 minutes or half an hour. I was there for an hour and a half. And she called in two other professors, one who was a professor of community nutrition, and the other one was a uh, professor of biology. And UCLA, these are incredibly accomplished people. And they were thanking me, the, certainly the uh, nutrition um, scientist, for making something that would help children eat more vegetables. And I appreciated him thanking me, like right away he saw that this is something that can help in families where children will be able to access vegetables on their own. Right. So one of the principles that I'm hearing is kind of out of sight, out of mind. Right. right, that you have what you, what you have here, like vegetables, are very beautiful, it's right? And so well and if they're sitting out there, then do you say that kids are just going to come and just be tempted by them? It's it's almost like you have a vase of flowers in the living room. It changes the living room. You've got this in the kitchen. It changes the kitchen in terms of it's beautiful. So I've even got friends who buy, let's say, purple cauliflower because. It looks neat in the veggie dome, <laughs> you know, it's, and, and people like to have different colors and actually eating different colors is a healthy thing. But it is, in fact, something that is celebrating good food. In our, in our country, in our culture, there have been many negative connotations to food. Oh, I've eaten the whole thing, and oh yeah, I really shouldn't eat that, and oh, that's, you know, that's too much for me, or, and, and, and we have obesity problems. And people are also angry about food or, or down about it, whereas this is like a missing element. This is us as a culture saying, hey, food can be beautiful, and guess what? You can eat everything in this thing and feel better and be better. And guess what? It's a very positive kind of circle of life that sits either on your kitchen table or it's on the kitchen counter, but it's part of the household where you are actually feeling positive about what you're doing with food, and it looks, as you, thank you, Howard, for saying that, it looks really beautiful. It mm -hmm. becomes uh, something that changes throughout your week, and you add colors to it. Right. Now, does, um, this, does this work mostly for raw foods, or do people this use this in cooking. conjunction with cooking as well? Well, let me tell you what the, the real tool that you've got in front of you, and this is, it also answers the questions of people say, well, how long does this last, and how long does that last? It is actually the place where you put clean, trimmed food that's ready to eat or ready to cook with on your table. And so people ask me, well, how long does it last? And I'd say, well, it's designed to last four to six days. But guess what? Within two days, you've eaten it up. Why? Well, it's food that you're going to eat. It's washed. It's ready to go. And it's on your table. <laughs> guess what? It gets, it's getting eaten up more readily than you normally would. I even come down in the night, the midnight snack, and you know what you're thinking. What's the easiest thing to do? Reach for the cracker box on the shelf, even though you've already, you know, emptied it or something. So many times, my snacks are now celery sticks and carrot because I'm just doing the easiest thing for me. And guess what? It's actually easier for your teeth and for your digestive system to eat vegetables if you're going to be doing something late at night than something with sugar. Um, it's not as good for your mm. teeth late at night. So, so when you say that people are, um, you know, tr washing and trimming and drying, that sounds like, like more work than some people would do. Is there something about the veggie dome? Is there something about having it out there that makes it 
easier or more likely that people will prep their food properly? Per good question. You know, you know what? Guess, if you want a carrot, Howard, you go to your kitchen, you open up the refrigerator, you pull out the carrot bag, you bring it over to the sink, you pull a carrot out, you wash it, you trim the ends, maybe you rinse it again, and you've got a carrot. Now, you rinse seven carrots out, and you put six of them in this thing, and you got your one carrot that you got, in the amount of time that you would have made one carrot stick, and maybe just a little bit more in terms of trimming these extra six ones, you've got carrots for the next two or three days. So actually, it doesn't take you more time. It's a much more efficient, effective way of having vegetables for the next two or three days in front of you. Mm. Whenever you that, and that's when you cook, you go, okay, I'm gonna get some kale out. Then instead, and it's just washing two leaves for cooking it in with the, your soup or you're making some sort of salad with it, you wash the whole bunch. And then put it, but what you're not gonna cook right away in the vegetable. And that makes it much more efficient in some way, but you've got vegetables always ready. When I'm gonna make a salad, many times, and I'm a, I'm a guy, so I do cave stuff, I just reach in and whatever five things come in my hand at the veggie dome, I chop it up. That's the salad for this afternoon, for me. And I've made salad in, in 30 seconds. So it's literally a more effective way, and it isn't more work, but um, you know, you, you have to maybe think it ahead. Uh -huh. Let's say if you're gonna be doing juicing, a person who does juicing is gonna have a five or six leaves of kale and some celery in there all the time. Whereas a family might have just carrot sticks and celery sticks. It's what you as a person need as, as your own needs to determine what's going to happen the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and also when I'm cooking something, let's say I'm got, I've got the, let's say I'm making lentils or something. And I'm going to cook a lot, cut a lot of vegetables. In. I just look over to the veggie dome sitting on the table already. Everything's ready to go. I just cut it into the lentils. And I haven't had any preparation needed at all there. Because I've done it a couple of days ago, and I'm cooking something that is uh, very fresh. Gotcha. So when I when I go to the store and I buy produce, you know, I'm I guess mm -hmm. I'm I'm not a typical American in that you know my cart is nine tenths produce, uh, but it's def you know it's definitely more than I could fit in one veggie dome. Do I need I, like six of them? Brady, you know Brady, the the amazing quarterback. His uh, he's setting a tone for people. He is an incredible athlete. It's top of the line. Guess what his chef is now saying? They're eating 8% plant-based. Right. So, so, how, do, so how, does, how does the veggie dome work with someone who's, who's already bringing, like, there's, there's, do I need five of them and a, and a dedicated <laughs> counter, or do I use the fridge with it, or do I go shopping every day? How, do, how, does, that, how, does, that, how does the veggie dome uh, interact with my workflow? That's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, as people are getting these, they're going to be developing their own kind of regimen. Like when you get up in the morning, sometimes you have like three or four things you do. Well, if you incorporate uh, that in your first part of your day or when you get home from work, you're not going to buy anything differently. You may end up buying, eating more vegetables. I'm not sure. But it's so a pretty large device. I mean, it's 12 inches by 10 and by and then the fact that it's oval means that it doesn't really take up that much space on your uh, kitchen table, but it's tall enough that you can put a, several bags of things in there. So my answer to you is that you'll be buying the same amount, and what I do is I, I'll buy a bunch of vegetables at the store, and I'll maybe take out some of the things that are in the fridge, and I've got all of my different vegetables from in the house on the counter, ready to go. And I take from each bag and I rinse and wash and trim. And then I've got everything in the household represented inside here. So when I walk, I can see that there's beets and carrots and, and, and beans. There's enough vegetable uh, space to, to keep several days of, of food in there. So again, if you eat a lot, and I, I commend you for that type of diet, it's really something that's going to make you live a, a long and healthy life. Um, and I, I think that it is designed for people to be able to eat lots of vegetables. And, you know, in terms of buying a second one, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to uh, being able to have a couple myself. Uh, right now, we've, we've only made the prototypes. And we're looking to raise the money with our Indiegogo that's really currently right now, Vegetome Indiegogo, is going to make it so that we can make the first batch off of the molds 
that these prototypes, uh, we made 20 of these, um, that I'll be able to have one and I think it might grow sprouts in it. So it, it definitely would be a good thing to have maybe two of them if you really get into different types of things. Mm -hmm. But you can mix them up. You can put a bunch of things in. My answer is you probably could do with one. You're okay. Okay. So tell, tell us about the Indiegogo and how, how much are they going to retail for and how can people get in on the ground floor and find out more? Okay. They're going to retail for uh, $35. And um, I mean, at the beginning, you know how it is. It's, it's, it's for us getting started, we have to have a price where we are able to uh, make sure that people are happy and we're delivering everything uh, properly. So $35 each one. If you go on the Indiegogo, it's current until uh, July 1st. And if people go now, I think there are certain specials um, that are that are good buys. You know, Indiegogo, you have to sell it for less expensive so that people um, you know, feel motivated. And also, they're they're. I really appreciate all the backers. I mean, they're they're buying something from just the idea of it. You know, and it's incredible to me that people have taken that that um, kind of leap of faith that you know they feel that it's a good idea, and personally, I have lived with it for a decade, um, so it's hard for me to, to, to um, understand, you know, from the perspective of not knowing, how really actually it helps your week, how it helps your kitchen be really a, a, a better, uh, more efficient way of handling your, your plant-based food. Uh, so well, I can, I can certainly imagine it's paying for itself in a month, yeah, and, and exactly. it, you know, e either you're starting to eat the vegetables, so you're getting healthier, so you need to spend less on drugs and doctors, or right. you're you're now going to buy thirty percent fewer vegetables because you aren't throwing them out, right? Or or you're buying the same amount of vegetables because you're eating more vegetables, but you're also throwing away. I mean, I tell you, this is one thing we're going to do when we get uh, their first batch of four thousand veg domes. We are actually going to have a competition with veg dome owners of who can. And I guess it'll have to be documented somehow with uh, uh, YouTube's or, or uh, photos. Um, who can do it so that they have zero vegetable waste? So personally, I can have zero vegetable waste. Whenever I put stuff in here, it gets eaten. It's on the table. I see it, and uh, I it, it's zero vegetable waste. And there are occasions where like I'll find a kale leaf that's been in there for a long time, and um, it, I have to throw it away. Um, and but the interesting thing is it's not because it's wilted. They don't wilt. They actually continue to grow. So think about a kale plant. If you think about it, the older leaves are at the base, and those are the ones you've just put in the, the bowl. Uh, and after three or four days later, the older leaves turn yellow like on a plant. So they're not wilting or rotting like they do in your refrigerator. They're just continuing the natural progress of turning yellow and then being the old leaf where new leaves are coming on the plant. So um, I, I'm going to have a competition of zero food waste with the Vegetome and see if people can go for eight days without throwing a thing out, you know? And let me describe to you what the method is like. You buy a head of lettuce. Um, what's your favorite lettuce help? Uh, romaine or... Or what types of lettuce do you oh, like? Well, at the, at the, at the moment, um, I like some uh, green oak leaf lettuce. Green oak leaf lettuce. So you take a nice, beautiful piece of lettuce. And when you go to the store nowadays, everything is pretty unblemished, pretty nice and perfect. I mean, I call it Olympic-shaped lettuce. I mean, it is amazing what they can produce. And they actually throw away 30% on the farm, and then they throw away 30% at the store. So you can imagine, we're getting stuff that's perfect. Okay, you buy your perfect head of lettuce powered, okay? You come home, and what the technique is, you take each older leaf, the outer leaves, and wash them, trim them, put them in the veggie dome. It's on your table. That's what you're going to make your sandwiches with or you're going to eat in your salads. And the younger leaves are going to be put back in this plastic bag because you can't fit everything into the, the dome at once. you got also your other favorite uh, vegetables. But those older leaves on the outside of the lettuce... You eat up first, and then you put the younger ones in the refrigerator to be taken out later to eat those uh, three or four days later. Guess what? You've had zero waste of lettuce. And lettuce is something that some people throw away half of the head. They dive right into the center of it, they pull it out, and all those older leaves are thrown away. Whereas you do a technique with the Veggie Dome, 
you're immediately taking off those larger leaves from the outside, and those are on display in the middle of your table. Zero food waste. It's a goal with us. It's something that we think is important in terms of, think about all the water, the fertilizer, the land use, the gasoline that's taken for trucks to bring them to the store, the amount of waste that takes place in both of those levels of on the field and in the store. We've got to stop throwing it away at home. And my thing is, all of us can complain about what happens in the farms and the stores, but we can do something at our homes. And that's the household is, I think, the important place where we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Right. And especially, I can, I can imagine, it can really change the culture of what, you know, what's, what's available, what's convenient, what's beautiful. You know, yeah. it's like, you said you started doing this when your kids were three and seven. Yeah. And I realize you don't have uh, a controlled experiment, so you don't have another family that's eating without the veggie dome. But what, right. cha what changes did you see in your kids, and what's their well, relationship now to fresh, plant, fresh produce? I know for sure that they eat three to five times more vegetables than their friends. My daughter, who I had, you know, she's 16 years old. At this point, they know more than you do. <laughs> she's vegan raw <laughs> at 16. Cooks herself. When she wants to have complete control of her, over herself, and um, so she, the, it, it, it's not that I told her to be or want her to be. I'm, I'm not vegan myself, um, and I'm, I, I, because really, when I go to different houses, I might have something that they serve. I went in Rome, I do with that, but I personally, when I cook, I'm vegan. Um, but what I'm actually saying is, my son would sit in front of his games or whatever he would be doing, some video or something. And I would come over and I would take the veggie dome and take the top off and, the, and just put it next to him. 30 minutes later, the thing was empty. I mean, this is stuff that would keep three adults busy for a while. It's what you put in front of them that they eat. Now, I know that you were saying that we don't really have a control of another family. But I do know that when I would go bowling, many times there would be parents that would take their kids to bowling, and there was this group of kids, and it was my turn. Dad Duncan would go, would bring a whole bunch of vegetables. And I wrote about this on the Indiegogo site. People can read it about that a little bit more there. But I was the dad who either embarrassed or made our, my children proud. I'm, I'm not sure. It's kind of a mixture of both. Oh, Dad, look what you brought to the bowling place. Everybody else, cheese pizza, Cheetos, whatever sodas. And me, I brought a bunch of snap peas and all these different vegetables. I mean, I'm saying four to five pounds of freshly washed vegetables. I put it on the middle of where the bowling was. Guess what? Gone. Just like a bunch of chips would be gone. Whatever you put in front of them, they're going to gobble up. These kids loved it. And they, I mean, they, you know kids, if they don't like something, they're not gonna go to it. They would clean that platter before the, the next bunch of rounds of, of bowling would play. So again, it's what you put in front of your children that kind of puts your um, vote as to what you'd like to have. If they like good stuff, they feel better when they eat. They don't feel all cranky and afterwards after. Uh, a bunch of chips or a bunch of cookies. Let me tell you, there's an energy roll. Right, and, it's, sure. and it sounds it sounds like you know one of the big problems uh, getting in Santa Monica. <laughs> <laughs> one of the big problems with getting people to eat right is people eat mindlessly. They don't pay attention to what they're doing, and it sounds like it sounds like you've turned that into a kind of advantage. Not that it's good to just not, you know, to play your video game and not even notice that you finished off a veggie dome or a bowl worth of produce, but at least if people are gonna be eating mindlessly, it's a heck of a lot better for them to be eating snap peas and carrots and lettuce and cherry tomatoes than M&Ms or Little Debbie snack cakes. Now think about, think about our culture. Think about what is put out in front of people when they're at work. Mints, pretzels, um, goldfish, you know those things? Um, it's, it's thoughtless, it's mindless in terms of the provider. And when it comes down to it, I think you're completely right. I, I, if there's a bowl of chips, I will eat them all up. You know, I, it's just something where uh, the humans are an amazing animal where we will know that there's a meal coming up 
and we'll see some food in front of us. I'm like, okay, I'll eat this right now because it's here right now and it'll make me okay through to dinner. Right. So before, before you go, I want to ask you a couple of business yeah. questions, if I might. Very good. So right now, people, the only place to get it is your Indiegogo campaign. Right, so because I'm, we have to I'm, manufacture it. Right. So I'm so I'm I'm curious like what has the market response been cuz you know uh, crowdfunding is highly variable some things you know within a day people 5 million people other things can kind of languish How, how's right. it going Um we had a really good start and then uh it had a lull which I I've, I've heard is a natural type of thing because we had a lot of our own personal contacts um, already know about it and want to get it. So how, how many, how much money did you ask for and how much do you have right now? We, we wanted to raise uh, $25,000. We're barely two weeks in now and we've gotten 70% of our money, which is, I mean, we're going to do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, we are also wanting to raise more money because we want to be able to make not just the minimum order, that's what the 4,000 is. I mean, the manufacturers are telling us, you know, that's, we won't make any less off of these molds you've got. So the molds are done, they're ready to go. It's just, we want to be able to make maybe more of them and have more of them available. Um, so we, we really uh, feel great. We've been told uh, this weekend, man, word went out. So your show, I'm telling you, Howard, you're kind of making history here because the upswing started about 24 hours ago and you're like riding the crest at this point. Some people are finding out about it right now. We've got 300 people who bought it. I mean, that's, uh, it's kind of, I'm feeling good. And good, so, like, so posi positive market signals. Yep, real good. Okay. Positive, word is getting out, and you're very much part of that. I really appreciate that. Sure thing. So um, once once the Indiegogo campaign is over, are you planning to like ship over the internet? Are you trying to get into Bed Bath & Beyond and on Amazon? Are you, uh, are, are, like, are you gonna have like, you know, people like me, health professionals as affiliates, selling it to, um, you know, bolster oh. our practice income? What's, what, what's your plans at this point? The plan is, and this is from someone who's literally in territory that he's never been in. And, um, so, is, that's place, actually, isn't it? I've got some really great support here in Santa Monica with the people at, at Entrepreneur, uh, Enlightened Entrepreneurs. They're, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be able to sell online from our website after the Indiegogo. We're going to go with the Amazon shingle also, the, the listing in the Amazon. And we're going to also be approaching Bed Bath and & Beyond. And I have an incredible support with uh, my uh, good friend, and as I told you earlier, I'm an editor, um, that a feature that I cut of a Chinese uh, production um, called Pavilion of Women, the producer of that is a really close, good friend of mine, but she lives in China. She has really, very uh, gotten interested in this project, and she, I think, is going to take it to China. And we're going to come to, we're going to be at the same time, or simultaneously, uh, be going to North America. And yes, Bed Bath & Beyond or Crate & Barrel, one of these stores is going to be, uh, you know, something that we're going to bring it to. Personally, Howard, I, I would like to try to make these as inexpensive as possible because I want as many people and to have the chance to have a, a, another tool. I almost feel like it's a description of a, it's like an, we're all trying to climb cliffs of ice and, and here I am with an ice pick and I want it to go to everybody and somehow it's going to happen that way. Gotcha. And we're going we're gonna to make money on them, but I'm, we're also going to because we have to be able to expand to bring it to other countries. I've got contacts in Ghana and Germany too already. I mean, Australia has been tapping on my shoulder. I'm focusing on North America right now, and I'm focusing on, I personally don't want to have a website where I have to make sure that everybody is mailed a package and receives it whole, because we really want everybody to be happy. So I want professional people to be delivering it and making sure the customers are getting unbroken glass, and if they do, they get replaced. I want uh, money get back guarantees for people. I, I, this, I want everyone to realize that it's actually gonna be an easy thing to add to their household, and I want it to last. I also am making, people have told me, oh, you can make it whatever you want. I'm trying to make it, personally, I've got mixing bowls that are 20, 30 years old, 
I want people to move from their apartment to their house and be able to carry this thing for years, okay? Gotcha. Hey, before you go, there's we have a question from uh, yeah. from a listener in the audience. I'm known as going to ask. Uh, Duncan, Ian is asking, and he says, some foods like carrots, celery, snap peas can be left in a bowl of water. Not sure for how long. Yeah. How does how does the veggie dome dif differ? Does it last longer? And then he adds, I leave the bowl of water in the fridge. Right. So there's a couple things. One is that you're saying, he's saying that he leaves the carrots and the peas and the celery in water in the fridge. Okay. Well, does, even though it's cold in the fridge, within minutes of him putting it in the water, there is bacteria growing. That's how they grow. You've seen... In the elementary school, the drop of water that has a million little creatures growing in that little drop of water. That's what's going on in his refrigerator. And if it works for him, that's good, but there is bacteria growth there. What happens is you can keep those on your table, um, and what, what the moisture is in the atmosphere from the plants. The, the water leaves the leaves, so there's no drops of water where bacteria grow. The plants are drinking from their skin, which is something that we don't really think about. It is um, really something the plants actually get more, as much water or more than their roots through their skin, and we don't acknowledge that. So to answer his question, though, is people have asked me, also, would you, they like having cold vegetables. This is small enough you can put in the refrigerator. It takes a lot of space, but let me tell you, Compared to all those bags of veggies that are not washed, you actually are more efficient with your space by putting this in the refrigerator also. So it would slow down any process too. I think that I've never done it before because I've always just left it on the table. But you will actually have just as much days of use if you put it in a regular veggie dome and maybe you would have more use of your vegetables if you have the veggie dome in the refrigerator. But when you start putting it in water, it does have a bacterial growth happening that maybe you don't see, and it's slower in the refrigerator, but it's still there. And um, so I would say Vegedome would at least be equal to what he's doing, if not better. Right. So one of the things I do is we have a garden, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll harvest some beets, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll cook the beets, but then I, I'll cut off the beet greens. And right now, I'll try to, if I'm not going to cook them right away, I'll put them in water. In, a, in like just a tall glass. And I, right. have to, I have to change that water twice a day or else it starts sw smelling like a swamp. Right. So is, is that is, is like cut beet so greens? Could so, something would, that would be happy in the veggie dome? Yeah, you would wash the leaves, wash them as, as like you're just about to eat them. If you're going to cook them or something like that, wash them and make you trim off the ends so that they're not, you know, no dirt or anything on them and put them in the veggie dome and they will just sit there for days. And you could have beet, I mean, and... Really, one thing that I, th this is something that I'm learning also myself, is the drier you have the inside the veggie dome, the less problems you have. So your beets, you might want to shake them off a bit so that there are no, not a lot of droplets on it. And then you put it in the veggie dome, good for four or five days. And I love beet greens, by the way. It's good, it's good for cooking. I cook them in my lentils. All right. Well, so as uh, soon, soon, soon as I get mine, I'll, uh, I'll set up the, the um, time lapse app on my iPhone put, yes. and uh, and I'll make I'll make a YouTube video so the world will see how, how long it lasts you can see a, a little bit of a, 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 a time-lapse shot in our Indiegogo video people want to take a look at that there's like a minute and a half video and part of that is uh, you'll see the veggie dome uh, over a three four day period uh, and time-lapse um, but your shot I want to have your shot though Howard okay and I'll make sure you get a veggie dome okay Okay, very cool. And, I, and, I'll tr and I'll try to remember to wear clothes in the kitchen while, while it's filming. Yeah, that's true. You have to wait, be, get the, this bachelor's uh, lifestyle. You can't do it. Um, <laughs> wear a towel in the kitchen always. <laughs> very good. <laughs> uh, thank well, you for your time. I really appreciate it, Howard. Well, Duncan Burns, thank you so much. Be best of luck. We have till July 1st. So if, so if people aren't familiar with Indiegogo, it's a it's a website that has various projects that you can fund, and you and people who fund yours, even at the lowest level, they're going to get their own veggie dome once you go into production. So it's I N D I E 
G O G O dot com, and they Today. just and they just do a search for Veggie Dome. Veggie Dome, right? B E G G I D O M E, and they'll find it. And then yes. people can. And if people order now, if people order before July first, right? July first um, might be a little. You know, I'd, I'd rather they go now to kind of uh, understand more because there's a lot more written material at that site. That any questions they may have or things right. that they understand, there's 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 more information than I. Very good. So, so for Pete, for those you know, you're dealing with the North American market. So we we all need instant gratification. When do we get our Veggie Dome if we uh, if we order it's, before the Indiegogo campaign closes? On July first is when we do the transaction where we are able to get the money from the backing from Indiegogo, and then we're able to place the order. So it's going to be at about a month or or three weeks after July first. We're talking. We're trying to get it to before August first. All right. So so if you're in North America, you would get one. Um, within and, within four to six weeks, right? And, and the thing is, we're only taking orders from North America right now. We can't; uh, it's too expensive to ship it overseas with all the customs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But eventually, we'll figure that out. So these are being uh, manufactured in the U.S. It's gonna it's gonna be only shipped to U.S. right now. Uh huh. I right. tried for a long time trying to make it in U.S. and eventually, I would like to make a deal. I want to try to bring some. Uh, work and create some jobs here in Los Angeles area. Um, when we get this thing really going, I want to make it in the U.S. But for right now, I have to make it in China. And my contact there in China has been so amazing. They're really good, good folks, and we're, we're going to do it as green uh, friendly as possible in terms of the packaging. Um, it's 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 a good first step. Mm -hmm. Guys, before you go, just one sort of uh, engineering geeky question. What is the difficulty about making those shapes that doesn't uh -huh. have that doesn't have the top or the bottom? Is it using a, a, a different kind of glass blowing or molding than well, just uh, the think normal? About glass makers for centuries, for thousands of years, blow glass, so they like it to be able to be a bowl shape or bubble shape, and this center part that's cut in the in the, in the middle. Mm -hmm. Think of it as when it's molten, when it's liquid glass. There's nothing supporting that, so it just folds in. So it's really difficult for glass makers to do it. Now, to make a mold this shape, what happens is because of the curvature, you have to have it a mold come into three different pieces or something and come together. And they tried it. Let me tell you, this thing should have been made in February, and it took them until May to make these 20 pieces because of the of the engineering difficulty. Mm -hmm. So I, it's really um, more difficult than I thought. Um, but we're going to make them right. <laughs> gotcha. And the and the oval shape as opposed to round. What's what's the consideration for that? Consideration is if when you have long celery stalks and carrots, you can put them in more easily. Mm -hmm. When I thought I had circular ones, even though it was really big, it would I couldn't fit things onto into the top because they were long. And another thing is we know that square inches on a table is a premium. So what happens is I've got a pretty large shape here. But it doesn't take as much space out on the table because it's not round. It's it's a, it fits on the table more easily, even though it's a large piece. Gotcha. All right. Well, I'm I'm out of questions. I know we we uh, we said we'd keep you here for 20 minutes, and we kept you for almost an hour. That's so. okay. My boss will be mad at me, but I can I'll I'll, I'll do good work today this afternoon. How about that? All right. Well, Duncan Burns of VeggieDome.com. Best of luck to you. Everybody check it out on Indiegogo. Thank you so much, Duncan. And, and Howard, uh, we'll, I we'll appreciate your show. You do really great work with your show. I, it's such a, an honor to be on it. I appreciate it. Very good. Take care. All right. All right. Well, that was cool. Um, I guess I'd have prepared in my mind 40 minutes, but I only have a couple minutes left, so I will just do the yada yada blah blah and say this is Triangle Be Well, your weekly health show focusing on not only the Triangle region of North Carolina, but the world as well. If you have questions about health, about wellness, about fitness, you can call in. Uh, it's an eclectic show. Very often I have guests, as I did today, Duncan Burns of Veggie Dome. I often have local health professionals, folks with various uh, interests and capabilities. There's a, there's a happy dog shaking at our feet right now. Uh, with maybe able to hear her, uh, her leash rattling. And, <laughs> but she's not being very obedient, is she, Amnon? Come on, I, that's, that's her chair there. So um, you don't let me put my stuff on her chair, so she better sit on it. 
All right then. So um, if you'd like to know more about Triangle Be Well, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Actually, let me just say there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up. Let me grab my calendar. Um, in the Triangle region of North Carolina, coming up this very, very week. Let's see, let's see what the calendar says. So today is Monday, the what? The sixth of June. Yeah. Um, okay. So what do we got? We got what do we got? What do we got? We. we got, um, no, maybe, maybe next week. Here we go. On Sunday, the twelfth, at the uh, Unitarian Fellowship in on Garrett Road in Durham. Uh, there's going to be a talk about a plant-based diet. Myself and Dr. Jonathan Sheline are going to be talking, and that's at uh, 11.45 a.m. for about an hour and a half. We're also showing a YouTube video about The Secret Reason We Eat Meat by Melanie Joy, and we're going to be talking about that as well. Later that day, the Nutritarian Society of Raleigh is having a potluck at which I will be speaking, and if you want to find out more about that, you go to meetup.com and you type in Nutritarian, which is Nutri, N-U-T-R-I, Tarian, T-A-R-I-A-N. You'll find the group. Steve Hoff is the organizer, and you can sign up to just show up. You can bring a dish. If you're not sure what to bring, then just bring an appetite, and I'm sure you'll be fed. And I'm going to be talking there about how to talk to your doctor. Once you've gone plant-based, the whole conversation has to change. You're not going to be a, a, a candidate for all the pills and procedures that, that the medical establishment wants to push on you, but your doctor may not understand it. So how do, you gain the, how do you gain the experience? How do you do the research? And how do you share evidence so that medical professionals will listen to you and take you seriously, and it's not going to be a constant battle? That's on Sunday the 12th at 5 p.m. Uh, it's in Raleigh. It's like a block and a half away from the Whole Foods on Wade Avenue, and you can find out more at meetup.com. Meetup what else do we got? Do, 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 do. On the 17th, Friday the 17th, I'm doing a cooking demo, also at the Garrett Road Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Um, and what else we got after that? Uh, oh, on the um, 16th, what a busy week. Uh, I better start sleeping more. In physical therapy on Wake Forest Road in Raleigh, I'm doing an introductory talk to basically how we can take control of our health destinies. And you, you can find that, that's on Eventbrite. It's a free event, but you do have to RISVP or uh, RSVP, Respondez Vous Si Vous Play, to, uh, to that in order to get in, because there's a limited number of seats. If you just go to Eventbrite and you type in my name, Howard Jacobson, you should find it. If not, just email me, Howard at Triangle Be Well, and I will let you know all about it. That's about it for now, unless you happen to be in the Detroit area, on June 28th, uh, 6.30 p.m., I will be giving a talk uh, in Detroit. And you can find that, again, you go to Eventbrite, and you just search for Michigan, and you search for my name, Howard Jacobson, and that will pop up. And I'll be talking there about some lessons I've learned lately, recently, what ways I've changed my coaching because I found that some things are working better than the things that I thought worked the best in terms of really? how do we – oh, Yeah. How do we get ourselves to change our behaviors and how do we help other people change their behaviors, especially around health and diet? So that's all for this week. I'm known. Thank you so much. What? What? I have more time. No, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ready to go home. I've been, I've been, uh, I'm training for an ultra marathon. I don't know if I told you that. No. So yes. Yesterday. So um, it's part, it's part, it's called sort of participatory journalism. I'm writing a book with an ultramarathoner named Josh Lajani, who is um, an ultramarathoner from Thibodeau, Louisiana. And what's kind of interesting about him is that in 2011, he weighed over 400 pounds. And he ran his first race, a 10K, at 320 pounds after losing about 90. And now he just he came up, and we worked together a few weeks ago in the middle of May, and we worked on the book. And while he was here, he figured, hey, I'll let me look for an ultra. So we found a 50K race called the Gamelands uh, Ultra Marathon, and he um, went to it, and he came in second. So he's, uh, he's not just, uh, you know, a guy who started running. He's a guy who started running, turned himself into an athlete, and now competes at, at uh, pretty high levels. So 
in working on the book, we talked about his story, about theory, about helping people change, about the importance of running and the importance of plants. And I swear, on the last day, we were having our last conversation, and the question was like, how am I going to co contribute to the book? And one of the things I thought was, well, if this guy is so damn inspirational, let's see how much he can inspire me. And I said, I said, why don't I run a 50K? And he smiled and he said, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking that would be really cool if you got into running those kind of distances. So that's what I'm doing. So I've, uh, I'm, I'm three mornings a week. I'm running about seven miles. Uh, I'm building up my foundation kind of slowly. So I don't, I don't want to blow anything out. But on weekends, I do one long run. So last week, it was 11 miles. This week, it was... It was a total of 13.77 because I'm using, you know, electronics to track it. Um, but I discovered that the same clothes that I wear for one for one hour do not work for two hours. So uh, I, I, I uh, finished my run yesterday with some some nasty chafing that I will leave to the imagination. All I will say is I didn't I didn't know male nipples could bleed like that. Um, but uh, anyway, I've I've learned my lesson. I went and got some uh, some synthetics quick dry synthetics to run in and so no pasties no pasties somebody did tell me to use um <laughs> crazy glue on your nipples oh, but i don't think i don't think he no. fully, i don't think he fully appreciates the hairy no. the hairiness of the jewish male <laughs> so uh i don't think that's necessarily going to be the best idea now when you're me. saying 50k well 50k inches 50k, 50K. feet 50k ki miles kilometers what? baby 31.5 miles. So that's that's going to be August, October 1st. 50 kilometers. 50 oh, kilometers. Okay. Not 50,000. No. Oh. 50,000 meters. Okay. If you will. Yeah. Okay. So it's, um, anyone wants to come run with me, I'd love to get a nice plant-based contingent coming and running and showing that, uh, you know, those of us who eat plants are not just, um, you know, pasty-faced, long-haired weaklings who, uh, you know. When is this? Can't do it. It's, it's October 1st. I, I believe it's called the New River Trail. If you go to if you go to ultrasignup.com and you do a search in October for Virginia ultras, you'll find that I think it's called the New River Trail. It's on, it's in Freeze or Fries. I, I prefer Freeze, Virginia, F R I E S, because I don't think it'd be great for me to run in a town that makes fries. I think I might get distracted by the sound. But Freeze, Virginia, it's along a river, New River Trail, 50k. It's flat. It's not one of these. Um, crazy hilly spartan tough mutters where you got to climb over boulders and you know civil war cannons and stuff this is a very very gentle start for me so if you want to if you want to um follow me you can actually uh one of the things i wanted to do was to make myself accountable so i set up a strava account and my my uh, little app on my phone connects to strava and so every time i run you if you're uh, if you're following me on strava or facebook you get to see how far I ran this week. And so this week I'm up to 7, 4, 21, plus 13. So over 30 miles. So um, my coach, Josh, would like me to get up into the 50s. But uh, we'll, we'll get there. And uh, so that's Where are the that's keys that. for your car? The keys for my car? What, <laughs> why do you need them? So I can run home? <laughs> <laughs> or, or see, I'm, I'm so exhausted that I won't fight you for them. <laughs> Yeah, so it's all good, except for the chafing. But uh, yeah. you know, it's it's, and that's part of what I'll be talking about in in Detroit is the idea of not making things easy for ourselves. One one of the one of the things I've always taught people, and like you know, we had in this conversation about the veggie dome, is that it makes things easy. So the stuff is out there; it's ready to eat. You don't have to think about it. I think there's areas in our lives where things are too easy, and we need to make them a little bit harder. So uh, that's one of the things I'm learning as I'm. Uh, getting into being coached for this 50k. So that's all for me. Um, we don't need to talk about bleeding nipples anymore on this show until next week. So thank you, everybody. If you want to know more about me, trianglebewell.com. I'm available for health coaching, for consulting to help you get well, to help you uh, navigate the healthcare system like your life depends on it, and to bring you interesting people talking about interesting topics so that you can be your best and healthiest self. And with that, be well, my friends.
You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brook, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Current Affairs with Omnon Nissan, And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.